we're still in the caves, and we've got eyeball clouds and flicker. Because you know, flicker is great. So the first half of this level is a little slow. There's a lot of just waiting around for something to happen and for a platform to come your way so you can jump in it. It's even slower because I decided to get this one up. Which, well, it's not really that useful to me, but it's there and I got it because I'm a rebel like that. I mean, it's a lot more useful in the arcade version where to continue you gotta put a quarter in, as opposed to these versions where you just hit select and press continue, so... You've got infinite lives anyway, no need to spend money, but... Well, it's an arcade conversion. We'll forgive it that. We'll condemn it for other things, but we'll forgive it for that. But once you get that, well, we're back here now. Now we gotta wait for the clouds to come forward again, because that's just how they work. The, the pattern does sort of reset itself once you come back up again after getting the one-up, so... It's not so bad. And Arthur's just chilling out on the sun's cloud. You know, he's on cloud nine, as it were. Except he's not, and that's a horrible pun, and I'm not at all sorry, in fact, for that. But we're done, once we make a jump off of this one. Oh, and look, our favorite friend in the world I was got. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Now they give you the torch, that's a bit of a clue. This uh, fire bridge area is neat. You've got the little imps. Uh, yeah, they're not so bad because they just rise straight up out of the lava and you can get them before they become a problem. Also, fire pillars. Yeah, watch out for fire pillars. That's, that's not a good thing to deal with. I do love that move. Also, that statue. Um, it turns you into a frog for ten seconds. Don't get that statue. <laughs> God, Red Armor, you're just... My lord. Well, here's our boss. It's the dragon again. There's not even two this time. It's just literally the dragon again. Where did the budget go on this goddamn game when it came to designing characters? I swear. Well, we're done level four. But now we're getting into the real shit. Oh, God. These two godforsaken fucking levels. Ugh. They really illustrate the big problem with Ghosts and Goblins. It, not so much in the Game Boy Color version, but that NES version I keep harping on. I'm gonna have to play a little bit of it sometime, aren't I? The problem is that, well, this you can see this level's full of imps and ghosts. They randomly spawn. They can show up anywhere, like on your fucking face when you're climbing a ladder. Oh, and that axe? Don't get that axe. I'll tell you about that axe in half a second, but first, I'm gonna kill this red arrow. Now, there was no real reason for me to kill that red armor, because this path is completely optional. It's got a one-up and some points. I took it because I'm fucking daring. I killed a red armor for no reason other than I wanted to. What is wrong with me? No, let me go back to that axe. Okay. It works like the torch. You shoot two in an arc. And, uh... Except it doesn't hit stun enemies. That's horrible already, because hit-stunning things like those ogres, as you can see, has saved my ass, because they don't run into me and knock me out of my armor. But the big issue... Remember how I said at the end of the last one that the dragon is immune to the lance? The boss of this level is immune to the axe! <laughs> you pick up this weapon, and you can't beat the level with the fucking dead! This game has some real nice little design decisions in it. It's amazing that this version actually manages to be playable. The NES version, even fucking worse. <laughs> I hate it. And yet love it at the same time. Oh, this game is just, it fills me with such conflicting emotions. I swear to God. Regardless, we're done the hell of level 5, and now all we have to deal with is the bastard who abducted our lady princess, Brin Brin. Satan! He swoops and he shoots. 
That's his attacks. He's done! We're going to the final level! Oh, we're going to purgatory itself, mixed with hell, mixed with a Bloody Mary. Christ Almighty, help me. Level six. Level fucking six. Okay, right off the bat, there should be a lance there. Just so you know if I move forward a bit. We've got a unicorn, so... If you had something that's, uh, not effective against a unicorn, you could get a lance and fight him, but, um, well, yeah. for some reason he decided to go over here. He's, he's never actually done that before, but fuck him. Okay, so you beat the unicorn, let's say. So you get up here, and you gotta fight the dragon again. The last time you're gonna fight these two guys, this time. But it's not bad, I've still got the torch, right? But you may see a little interesting thing there. That is the shield! That's a weapon that is, uh, required to beat this level. In fact, if you beat this level without the shield, it's like, this weapon has no effect. And it sends you back to, like, level 5. Which is bad. Which is very bad. Oh, I could say so much about this fucking shield. Uh -huh. You need it to beat the boss, right? But the UNICORN IS IMMUNE TO IT! So you gotta pick up the lance. But then the dragon is immune to the lance, so you gotta pick up the shield again, and you've gotta do all this mumbo-jumbo bullshit. Why the fuck couldn't you just make everything be able to be hit by the weapons? The game is goddamn difficult enough with your random-ass patterns. Why do you need to add that wrinkle? To steal my money? I paid $50 for this goddamn game! I gave you my money! Capcom, why? Capcom, why? I, I didn't even touch on why this level is horrible and bad. I don't have time for it because I'm done, but... Suffice it to say, this is a purgatory that in the NES version took me, like, three hours to clear. This, not so bad. We've got a Lord Satan as the final enemy. Or do we? Actually, no. It's another... An another... Satan. It's two Satans. I don't want to jump up because I, these little bastards like to swoop as I jump up to try to hit them. Surprise, you're dead! Ugh. I'm incoherent and yelling, but... My god! This game, it's almost going to be over. We got a final boss to deal with. Oh, God. Who's it going to be? So here it is, our final battle with Lord Astaroth in his original incarnation. You can only, like, walk in one direction. You just back up. Hit him in the head with your shield. He's easy as piss. Not that piss is that easy, but whatever. It's all you do. He's, just, he's done. But this was all a dream device by Hades. So, yeah, guess what happens now? You'll never get it. No, you, you'll never understand what's going on here. They gave you a password. Why? We beat the game, didn't we? You beat the game once. But now, you have to be. Of course, the original Ghosts and Goblins is a bit lacking because it's the same goddamn game, just again. It's bullshit. So, uh, excuse me. Alright, we're gonna face off against Lord Astaroth uh, uh, again. Second loop. Nothing changed. Everything's still bullshit. Get out of here. So here's the real ending. Yeah, like I said. No ultimate weapon, no goddess bracelet, no real bull. You just beat the same goddamn game you just beat again. It's kind of stupid. And then the ending tells you to go back again! <laughs> Arcade mentality. <laughs> that was Ghosts and Goblins on Game Boy Color. Despite the screaming I've done for the latter half of the game, I kind of like it. I also kind of hate it. But it's a far cry above the NES version, which I really don't like. It's kind of poorly designed. I'm not just saying, like, that because of the original. I mean, like, the port is kind of... Bleh. We're done here, aren't we? Yeah, we're done here. Alright, well, that was that. I wonder what I can do next. 
We could probably kill some vampires or something. Hmm.